This meeting will be held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation. Please note that while an option to remote attendance or participation is being provided as a courtesy to the public, the meeting will not be suspended or terminated if technological problems interrupt the virtual broadcast unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with particular interest in any specific item on this agenda should make plans for in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. This meeting will be held in person in the main meeting room of the Deerfield Municipal Offices. In accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, anyone intending to record the meeting must identify themselves to our clerk, Trevor McDaniel, and provide their name and address for the record. Thank you. So I'll call the meeting to order and we will skip over everything and go right to our main uh, agenda item. And this is the discussion of the peer review that Weston and Sampson did for the old Deerfield sewer treatment plant. So um, why don't we open up with Matt? Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit of your overview of what you did? Sure. Hi, I'm uh, Matt Germina. Uh, Matt, you're going to have to speak the, in. And, oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Let's pull it forward. Pull it yeah. forward. Yeah. And you're going to have to introduce yourself. Hello, I'm uh, Matt Germain, uh, PE at Weston Sampson Engineers. Um, over 20 years of experience in uh, wastewater treatment. And um, I'm here with, with Simone, who's also at Fuss, uh, Fuss and O'Neill. That's my old company <laughs> at uh, Weston and Sampson. And uh, we, we worked on this report together um to basically compare an activated sludge wastewater treatment system upgrade with the um the mbr process upgrade and they were done by two different engineers and then we were a independent third party who reviewed the two alternatives um so we can we can basically go through this at a high level and then um after we go through it at a high level then we can we can open it up for the board to to direct the conversation. So would you, are you interested in, in kind of going through? So um, we make some comparison uh, about the both process here and um, for the activated load, uh, capacity, uh, the, the, the report uh, that we have, it was for uh, two, 250,000 gallons per day. Uh, MBR process, they did 255 per day in two phase. So both, um, it's for the, the, the maximum capacity for the, 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 the plant. Um, the activated sludge, um, they are typically reduces the nitrogen, but uh, in the report, they they didn't consider this, this, um, uh, this reduction. Um, the MBR process, the, the report that we have, uh, they already considered the reduction of the nitrogen uh about the quality of the treatment the effluent treatment so both have a high level quality but uh the MBR process uh they have um high level disinfection too so but they 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 have a higher energy consumption if compared with the activated sludge so activated sludge uh consumes uh, less energy than MBR. Um, so the activated sludge um, intend to reuse many of the structures of existing structure in the plant. So they doesn't need to uh, use new areas around the, the, the plant. Uh, but if compared with the MBI process, uh, activated sludge has a bigger footprint. Mm -hmm. um, so the construction phasing uh, for activated sludge will be a little difficult 
to maintain treatment during upgrade because uh, the reuse of the existing structures. Um, the, the renovation uh, needs to, to go parallel with the operation and the construction. So it is a little difficult. Uh, on the other hand, the MBR process is not reusing the structures, so it is easier to for the construction. Uh, the MBR process um, needs to to compensate the flood area. Uh, for this, they they are considering demolishing existing structures. Um, the renovated existing structure has high potential for unexpected expense for the activated sludge. And the MBR process allowed the existing plant to operate as it with minimum interruptions during construction. Uh, talking about the operational resilience, both cases uh, are very robust process. And, but the, if we talk about the increasing um, flow, the activated sludge has advantage in, on this because um, they, they, they can uh, treat uh, peak of flows easily if compared with the MBR process. Uh, the quality of the secondary clarifier uh, flow may be affected during process upset as a sludge carryover may occur in the activated sludge. And this is not occur with the MBR process. Um, uh, when we talk about the operational, the operation, uh, both cases assume two hours per day, uh, five days a week. And um, the operation of the MBR process is more complex and require a, a trained operation operator. And the activated sludge is it's known of, of the operation uh, team. So they are, um, they are more familiar with the, the system. Um, Talk about the prices. Yeah, yeah, I can, I can take over. So, yeah. so the the difference, the difference in O and M, the difference in O and M cost between the two, is um, is similar, but the MBR process is is slightly higher by by about um twenty thousand dollars annually. So, depending on the number of users that contribute to the O and M cost of the system, um, that twenty thousand dollar divided by the number of users can be significant. In terms of construction costs, um, the activated sludge does come in lower because we compared the activated sludge, the, the, the phase one of that, which is for 250,000 gallons per day, to, to do an apples to apple comparison. The MBR to so also be 250,000 gallons per day would have been phase one and phase two construction costs together. So that construction cost was higher. Um, there is quite a bit more detail about the pros and cons and, and um, why ultimately we, we decided the activated sludge would be the most feasible alternative for the community. Basically, looking at, at a very, very high level, the, the MBR process, um, some of the, the, the wastewater strength that the MBR process was designed around was during a two-year dry weather period. Whereas um, really the, the, the wastewater flows at the plant and the wastewater strengths are that, that we think would be more representative are, are higher, both in wastewater strength and flow rate. And that, that has the potential when the MBR process is um, designed around those st st wastewater strength and flow conditions, maybe it's possible, you know, I'm, I'm thinking that the MBR media area is going to have to be increased in size, which will further increase the size of the system. The other, the other thing was the MBR process is really fixed at a uh, at a pretty definitive limit for what the the max flow rate that you can pass through the the membranes are, and 
and um, kind of the secret sauce there for an MBR system is to have flow equalization. If you have a high, you have high flow rates coming in after after a storm or during spring wet weather flow, it comes into an equalization tank, and then over several days, you pump down the equalization tank. So you're not hitting your membrane system with um, peak flow rates that are too excessive. Um, the kind of the concern that we saw was that the the flow period that they used to design the MBR system was during um, it's really a two year drought period in the Northeast. Whereas um, we we even found uh, we in, even included some data for for November of I think it was a pretty recent month recent year where we actually see the the MBR system with um, the flow equalization wouldn't wouldn't be able to keep up with those flows, which would which would lead to some sort of um, I don't want to say an emergency situation, but a situation where you have flow coming into the plant higher than what the plant would be able to operate for for, the, for a proposed MBR system for an extended period of time, and and you either have to overload the MBR systems, which decreases their life, or you have to um, bypass some of the treatment around the MBRs, which which then leads to poor effluent quality. Whereas an activated sludge treatment system, which they have out there now, can handle those wide fluctuations in wastewater flow. Um, in terms of terms of operation, Matt, Matt, can I just ask you a question there? Absolutely, if that's okay, if you don't mind. When when you talk uh, just for apples to apples, so with one one clarifier. The activated sludge process can operate at two hundred fifty thousand gallons per day. One clarifier. Well, the proposed the proposed design for the activated sludge system they actually greatly oversized the clarifier in, in our opinion, and I'm not a big fan of just having a single clarifier. So, so that was that, that was one of our little more detailed comments, um, right. saying it in a friendly way for, gotcha. for both of them, which was they were proposing uh, for the activated sludge to basically maybe abandon or repurpose the rectangular secondaries. And we said, maybe you should rehabilitate them, but the new circular rectangular, the circular clarifier, maybe make it a little smaller or maybe nestle it in a little better for the rectangular. Um, but yeah, I, I, I do think that that one clarifier, I think it had a two day detention time in it, which during peak flows would be excellent, but during um, average day flows would be greatly oversized. So yeah, I, I do, and that was a comment we pointed out. Um, I just wanted to follow up. During our July storms, we had four hundred fifty thousand gallons come through. We did not end up dumping anything into the river. It was able to be handled. With this MBR process, would not be able to handle it. So the MBR process would take for for a, a single day event. The MBR process that excess flow wouldn't go through the treatment it would be stored in equalization the problem the problem comes and we try to show that with a with a flow graph is that once your flows are elevated due to wet weather they they don't a lot of communities they tend to drop off after 5 to 7 days but in, in your community the flows to the plant stay elevated for a considerable amount of time and it varies from storm to storm um you might not see that during a drought when when groundwater is very low but during a more normal situation november 2018 we were, we were seeing that that if you have that high flow rate and then you have a sustained high flow after that um a little more thought has to go into that flow equalization which might add expense to more tankage how many days would it have taken for that 450,000 in the in the subsequent flow into the um plant to clear we had the mbr i mean i'm just looking at that it would be well over a month or two it it, it would be an extended period of time it i i guess i would being being an engineer at heart i'd have to say well i'd have to see the the flow rate at subsequent days if the flow is higher than the um basically what the the treatment the max treatment rate is of the mbr so let's say it is 250,000 gallons per day and it can it can take you can equalize let's say half a million gallons then after about two or three days um everyone's going to be start everyone's going to start sweating a little bit because it because it's like i hope the flow comes down and if it doesn't that we're going to have a problem and eric could you address that maybe it doesn't drop that fast those flows once they get on high levels like that 
They it literally takes all month for it to move back down. I mean, we sit there and pray for dry weather in a row just to get the flows back down to regular. Um, the question with the clarifier, the one DPC had submitted for the circular clarifier, we have the same size clarifier right now at South Deerfield, and we do over a million gallons a day in it. So high flows would be no big deal for that clarifier. Um, the retention time with the uh, flow equalization, it's it's a big thing. You're going to have to add more tanks because that's only, even if you double what was first submitted, that's still only 150000 a day. You still have another 100000 you got to get to. So basically you have to triple that to be able to handle the same amount. So concerning. Um, do you remember off the top of your head, I'm not trying to, we had five and a quarter inches of rain on December 18th. How long? That was the last event that I remember off the top of my head. How many days was that? Usually single events don't do it. It's having a wet month. Right. So if you have just, if if we had like a normal summer, like a July and one day you had five, six inches of rain, there's more runoff and stuff with that. It's whenever you have the slow soaking rains that soak into the ground, the groundwater is very high. Then we get a ton. We got like upwards of 70, 70% 70 or 72% uh, I and I through That's the plant at some points. Cause I just got this year's I and I report and seven, I think, I think it was 68 to 70% of the flow for that plant is I and I related. That's kind of what I was going to mention yeah. is that, I think if you're building a brand new plant with new infrastructure going into it as a private facility, it makes sense because it's all tight. With our system, the age of it and the condition of the pipes, it's much harder to kind of control that I and I unless you're changing all the pipes, which we hope to do as we go, you know, through. But it, it's going to take a while, and um, you're, you're always going to have I and I because we've got really high, you know, high water table, but. The condition of the pipes is really exasperate, exasperating this this instance, it seems to me. But to answer Carolyn, it's it's more of a, a whole a whole month worth of body of work, not just a one single event. So when we have a wet month of like 10 inches, it'll take well into the next month or sometimes into the following month before it comes back down. Okay. Well, my concern is we're we're trying to make a decision for 40 years. And everything that's telling me is that we're gonna have double the water that we have now if if you don't repair the infrastructure yeah right that, that's what i'm hearing which is uh we're, we're building a plant to solve a problem for inadequate infrastructure that's sending the wastewater there right if if you didn't have the infiltration into that system what would you design to right we're yeah. right i mean and I, yeah but I you're think always... you have to have a happy medium because if you don't have the i and i what you get in those summer like when kids aren't there and stuff everything just dries up and and blocks up this so you've got to have like you got to find a happy medium of like understood i and i coming but through what i heard from you trevor you're right we have a very we very old more. system yeah we have more than should go in there Correct. than you would like you're right yep and so they're, they're, we're, we're hoping to reach that happy medium but we yeah. will be having more water there's no question and that's my one of my concerns more more storm water more not storm. more wastewater right more storm so, water more water what he's talking about is super saturated soils and that's what with this wet whole year uh, i mean i can't imagine having more but that's what we're going to be faced with and that's what we have to plan for no matter what we want I have a question about also we we have a problem in Deerfield with shifting shifting land and I don't know if that affects the pipes. Um, so this is going to be a continual problem. Eagle Brook sits up on a hill. This the soil up there is shifting, and it's going to continue to shift because we don't have any structures to keep it from shifting. So pipes are going to open up over time, and then you're going to be in a situation of trying to back you know go back to, to solve a problem that could have been solved at the outset with an oversized, and we keep arguing about the size of these things, right? And on a on a on the absolute best conditions, a small plant might function, but we don't have ideal conditions at all anytime. And even if we fix the pipes, we're still going to be in a situation where if we, if we have a July like we had last year, you know, how many days did we have peak flows of like 450,000? So, you know, it's, we can differ on what's the, what's the exact right size, but I mean, well, I as a, a municipal person think oversized is sometimes better. 
Yeah, I, I just think in this case, Tim, I, I wouldn't disagree with you, but when it has a five or a seven or a $10 million price tag associated with building to oversize, right? That that's a question that you have to ask, right? It's sure. it's not it's not a, a small increment to build to oversize. It's it's a big number. So the first the first um, plant uh, design that you submitted was for seventy five k, and then you had another phase built into it, which brought the second phase up to somewhere approaching this other size, uh, the the activated sludge, and it still wasn't two fifty k. And we communicated to you that we want you to design a plant two fifty k. If we could have compared apples to apples, I mean, different processes, of course, but we never got a design from you that addressed our primary concern. So part of this is like Weston and Sampson's in a position where they have to sort of create the situation so that they can compare the two plants. Mm -hmm. So this this was a problem from the outside of the design you wanted us to consider. So I'm just saying. Sure. Tim, Tim let me just say to that. Right. The reason we're here is in, in partnership with the town. So sure. we wanted to make sure and, and just to be transparent, we've spent two hundred and twenty five thousand dollars. Right. Right. Our our design is a 30 percent design. It's not a six page conceptual design. Right. right? Uh, it's priced based upon real world pricing. Mm -hmm. um, and and I'm not here to argue. Right. right? I'm here in partnership with the town to say, is there better ways in which we can in partnership, uh, save taxpayers dollars. That's that's the whole goal here. Right. And I think we did we did present a design that said, here's a phase one and a phase two, which which Matt and the team from Weston and Sampson incorporated in. Um, I think the major bullet points that I that I would highlight about that design is that a uh, it's constructability. Uh, it's more eco friendly, right? It addresses the nitrogen issue, which you can speak to, and I'm assuming is coming down the pike. Uh, as regulations change, uh, you're going to have to begin addressing that. And I understand this issue of, of peak flows. And I think that's a that's a combination of issues. That's not necessarily, should we design a plant to 500,000? Right? I just heard that we're up over 400,000. I, I don't think you would. And, and so we're not here to argue. We're simply here to say, here's a perspective. We think there are alternative ways to address this. But once again, this is your decision to make as sewer commissioners. And if you want to borrow... $25 million to build a plant, that, that's your prerogative to do that. Sure. And, and we're not here to argue. We simply want to make sure that we inform ourselves about that process yeah. and that taxpayers feel informed that there are other options in a way to address this. Um, and of course, each of them come with different levels of cost and, and whatnot. But we do believe that, that there are alternatives and just encourage you to look at those. Sure. And you're free to make those decisions how so, you see fit in the best interest of the town. So, you know, that's why we hired Weston and Sampson to do an independent review. Because And we were glad to pay that bill. Yeah, and, and, and that's fine. And you also, when you came to us, said you would be happy to spend $200,000 to design something, and then we would have the ultimate decision. Correct. And so the report comes back, and it says the 40-year life cycle is $2 million more for the system you, you proposed. You can either accept that for what it is or or not. That's That's fine. When I look at the bottom line, that number speaks to me. Great. Hey, Matt, I got a quick question. So throughout this process, we were told to, it's got to be 250,000 gallons per day, right? Did you guys look into that? I mean, today I'm hearing about peak flows. Yeah, so wait, so the, when you're looking at um, sizing a wastewater treatment plant or any component of it, you, you, look, at, you look at several conditions. Once the first part is, what's the strength of the wastewater coming in and how, how many pounds of nitrogen, BOD, phosphorus, uh, suspended solids, TSS, and then you design the process for that. Um, the second part of it is the range in flows. Um, you have basically your your average day design flow, which you, you pretty much take the flow over the entire year and you, you basically take an average of that. And for that number, the flow is lower when you um when you look at like say like the max month number you you're you're basically and every collection system is different but your max month number is going to be much higher than that um if it's an older system and then you have your kind of like your peak day flow which is is kind of like um when all all the 
all the situations you hope don't line up actually line up together where you have saturated groundwater, the storm hits just the right way. And I don't know, but let's hypothetically a stream floods at the same time. Like what does that look like? And the, the plane has to be able to operate under all those conditions. The, the MBR system can, um, when you do the phase one and phase two together, it can operate at that, um, basically that 200 and 250,000 gallon per day kind of design rate. The, the concern happens to be when they have that max month flow where it's, it's just a little bit higher every day for an entire month. And then after a certain period of time, um, your equalization isn't going to be able to keep up with it. That that's that's the that's the biggest drawback of the MBR system is that fixed capacity for treatment. I don't know if I answered your question. Yeah, I, I guess all I'm trying to ask is, you know, I'm not an engineer. Um, everything was to the two hundred fifty thousand dollars a day design or gallons per day, mm -hmm. and now it's all about peak flow. Um, well, it's always, always and yeah. you know, Tim said we're we're arguing. We're not arguing. We've been trying to work with them mm -hmm. to figure out the best solution, and it seemed to be the two hundred and fifty. It is, but now it it's is. the peak. So well, no, I, the the peak is is just something that, um, as Eric said, he's had above peak flow days, and he's been able to handle it without putting effluent into the river. So that's a different consideration than the capacity of the plant and. I don't want you to mix the two things up, and I'm not an engineer either, but I think I understood correctly what Matt and, and Eric were telling us. If your peak flow, now if the plant operates at the peak flow for, you know, too long for, let's say, like, let's say four or six months at a time, that's not really the peak flow anymore. That kind of becomes your average flow. Um, so we're, we're kind of looking at it like your max, kind of your worst case max month, like how would the... How does the flow equalization work? Say November of 2018. How 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 long will it perform before you fill up? Can you can you stay ahead of what's coming in or catch up after after the equalization does its job? And um, be, between that and the between not really being able to handle that flow coming in faster over over that month that you can treat, and then the the wastewater strength the membranes were designed to was was less than what what's typically expected kind of kind of that combination together i, I kind of i don't know how the different groups arrived at their design parameters but that's kind of they, they didn't quite match up one small point the um the activated sludge system historically does provide nitrogen reduction down to um single digits let's say um, discharge limits of four or five milligrams per liter, like without really trying very hard. Um, the, the present, the, the, basically the information that we received didn't, didn't really go into showing those calculations. Um, it's, it's again, one of our, one of our finer points that we pointed out was like, it would be good to know, to see that, see that calculation done to see how, much of a nitrogen reduction it just that system inherently provides without without trying too hard without chemical addition or without any kind of supplemental effort um the same way that the MBR system kind of inherently does the nitrogen reduction they, they both do do that even if it's not a requirement it's nice to be able to compare them my understanding is that um we have low nitrogen levels and um it, you are absolutely correct uh, there is concern about the nitrogen levels going into Long Island Sound, and it is working its way up the Connecticut River. So that was a concern of mine, but um, I think I'll have Eric address that. Um, I don't think it is a problem for us. And I, in looking long range, do you see any issues? I don't really myself foresee a problem. Um, when I took over the plant, the uh, ammonia and nitrogen numbers were uh, slightly higher. Um, they ox they use the aerators all the time, always oxygenating the water. We set up a timer system on the actual aeration basin, and with the on and off timers, uh, you know the the air switching on and off and, and leaving it off for a long period of time, uh, we get the nit whole nitrogen cycle. Um, we night, you know, take the ammonia out, make it nitrated, then go back out and denitrify it. So 
we typically now are, we went from probably having total nitrogen levels probably in the close to 20s. Um, we're down into sing well into single digits now. We anywhere from four to ten, depending on flows. So um, that's I don't foresee it being much of an issue because we this was probably one of the wettest years I've seen around this area in a long time with flows in any of the plants. So if you can do it now, you can usually do it on the other ones. So you don't see any regulatory issues going forward too much. They've been. I've been up here in Massachusetts doing wastewater for probably 14 or 15 years now, and we've had nitrogen limits the whole time. Um, and they said then that all oh, you're going to have, you're going to get it in your permit, you're going to get it in your permit. And it, I don't really foresee it. And the biggest part is these smaller plants, um, you're putting so little into that river. Um, people, I guess, don't really get these bigger plants when they're doing hundreds of millions of gallons a day. Absolutely. They can they can really mess up the waterways and stuff, but us on a smaller level, even with the Deerfield River being a smaller level or a smaller river, um, we I don't think there's a whole lot we would do to affect that. So, did you have any other questions, Matt? I, I just want to know how we can be helpful. I mean, I think I think we uh, our goal in starting these conversations, what feel like two years ago, was to say and demonstrate. Um, and, and clearly I think Matt, one of the challenges has been is, is data. Uh, I think the data that we're talking about is five years old. Right. Uh, and, and I think we, we would, we would be probably happy to go back to our team. If somebody can provide us the data, uh, to look at and address some of these questions about flow and, and wet months and, and all of those kinds of things. But we're just here in partnership to say, we, we do believe there's alternatives. I think there's uh, very qualified people looking at this through different lenses. Mm -hmm. um, each of them come, as, as Matt has highlighted, with a bunch of different issues from constructability mm -hmm. uh, and all of those pieces. Uh, we, we can look at um, different areas as far as annual cost or replacement costs or things like that, I think. Uh, if I had our team sitting here, they would probably uh, look at those numbers slightly differently. Right. Um, sure. But but ultimately, it's 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 your decision. And if you feel well informed and that you have all the information, that that's your decision to make. I think we we believe that there are opportunities to be um, uh, more efficient. But if if you have other reasons, that's that's totally your call. Um, well, I'll, I'll let everyone speak individually, but uh, for myself, um, you know, having the 250,000 uh, gallon per day permit is, has always been the, we're not reducing our permits. You, you can keep that. You can keep the permit, but not have a plant at that size. Right. Mm -hmm. But we, I feel, uh, given the fact that we have climate change and that we're going to see more intense events, that we have to have a system that can have the capacity to handle these deluges and supersaturated soil for months on end. This has been a year long process and we have to have a plant that we can rely on not dumping anything into the river. And um, and truthfully, so I'm, I'm ready to move forward with the activated sludge kind of um, plant, but um, we aren't moving forward on that until we take care of our roads. We have, you know, a lot of damage from our roads. So this is, I mean, we're not making, in my mind, making any decisions until we move forward with our roads and get that sorted out. So we're looking two or three years down the road, minimum, before we decide what we're going to do. And, we may not have that time, but. but well, <laughs> I mean, it's working now. Well, we have prior. Barely. I know. Barely I know. working now. But. Um, and so we can certainly get you information so you can do more research if you want. And we're certainly willing to come to the table. But I I really feel that we have enough information at this point to say that we probably are not going to look at the alternative. But I'll be uh, glad to have you all speak. So my, my um, kind of take on all this, just being involved with this for the last few years, um, working on the other plant, just trying to get my head around sewage and how it all works. Um, you know, my, 
I know no one really wants to hear this, maybe one other person at the table, but piping that stuff to old Deerfield 100 years out, I mean, to South Deerfield 100 years out is the best alternative. Um, get rid of that plant completely and put a pump station in. I know that's not been looked at. You know, we're not interested in going there without major infrastructure money from the feds, but long term, that's the cheapest, most efficient way to do it. Um, my biggest fear, like I'm grateful that you did this and gave us another alternative to look yeah. at this because I think um, you know, I wasn't fully aware of MBR. I, I talked with our engineers about it earlier and they were, you know, they never really felt it was the right solution for that location and the infrastructure we have now. And I but I do I feel like if we were building a brand new plant for say an infrastructure, uh, an, an entity like yours specifically without anything else attached to it, it seems like it would be the most efficient way to do that. And I know like a, a school in the Berkshires kind of put one right in the middle of their plant and they, they couldn't do a sledge thing because they had, uh, they just didn't have the expo, you know, the, the space to do it. And if you have brand new pipes and all of that stuff, it, I think it would make sense. My biggest fear is the, is having the capacity so we either have to have the capacity by building larger storage tanks to handle that flow until it's equalized. And even still, like with, with the with the MBR, what made me nervous is that it it you you it all has to go through that, or you're not treating it. And you you can treat it later if you have storage, but we have floodplain issues, so it's hard to get a lot of storage. You have to dig a hole somewhere else. But um so my concern was the amount of flow that comes into that plant and how do we handle the excess on these, you know, this year or the other years with the clarifier system, you can handle it to, to, to a degree. And um, I think if we do anything, we need to, we need to spend 250,000 and kind of go through a real plan to make sure that this quick out, you know, the quick look at what this activated sludge system is, is actually right. I think it, it, it does make sense. Maybe we hang on to the two clarifiers or, um, or make that center clarifier, you know, a circular one much, you know, smaller. Um, it doesn't have to be exactly this plan. Maybe we can find ways to make it more, more cost of, you know, cost effective if we, you know, if we end up going this route, but my biggest concern was not having that other capacity through an MBR screen versus um, clarifier just gave you a lot more security yeah. long term. But I mean, climate change is the reality, really. So yeah, I I also appreciate the fact that you're willing to you know suggest alternatives, and um, I think that Weston Sampson points out in its report that um, activated sludge the size of the clarifier probably is oversized. Uh, there's cost savings there. So I'd be more than happy to work with you and your engineers to design the least expensive activated sludge system possible because nobody wants to spend money that they don't need to spend. Um, but if you're only willing to look at the MBR side of it, then we're stuck making a decision, not knowing, you know, are we working together or not? So my feeling is I think that the 16,000, 16 million figure is probably high but we wouldn't know that until we get to the final design. Um, and we wouldn't know the same thing on MBR. So, you know, I, I guess we're going to have to make a decision because Eric's been telling us that the, that the plants, you know, got a lot of problems and they need right. to be addressed. So I, I, I hear Carolyn say two or three years. I hear yeah. Trevor say tomorrow, so, yeah. something different. <laughs> uh, and and I, I, more I, nervous than I, I, am. I can't leave without asking this question. Yeah. Would the town ever think about not operating that plant? I don't think so. Is it is that completely off the table? I I I believe. I mean, yeah. I I think that. Um, I don't know the savings to kind of like not operate the plant. I just feel like we we operate it now. I mean, would you rather not operate that plant? I mean, I just don't know what it really saves us in the long run. I, I, yeah, yeah. I mean, well, it's less you have to do, but it's still like, I don't know. After don't seeing the hole you have to climb down in, I, yeah, I, exactly. I, I would answer for you and say <laughs> yes, but. I don't mind it, but um, <laughs> I mean, I think with the South Deerfield project, putting part of that on the sewer users and everything over there, there's not a way to get away from keeping them linked like that. Mm -hmm. um, 
Yeah. Because then you have it's hard. What was voted as a whole sewer system. Now you take that part off, and the South Deerfield users have to eat everything from over here yeah. at this sewer system. However, I looked into um, having a utility buy it, and what they would pay us would then pay off the loan and what the burden would be for the South Deerfield sewer treatment plant. I was more interested in that myself. I was looking at alternatives if it could be operated independently. Uh, but I was the only one. Yeah, I didn't was. like that plan at all because you're stuck with somebody who doesn't really care and they can raise your rates no matter what. And they invest and they, they take their, whatever it costs to run all their plants, they build a capital plan and you're just going to pay that. And so you're building, you know, Methuen's plant as well as working on yours. I just didn't like that that model at all. I'd like to have a lot more control over our costs. Would, would, would you entertain, I'm, I'm not saying that, but but if if it were a consortium of the not-for-profits that that privatized it. So, I mean, when when you talk about who the users are there, yep. Trevor, just to be There's like 10 private users. Well, there's yeah. or 30 or 35 yeah. right. private users. Right. And then there's, you know, there's the entities, right? Mm -hmm. And so, uh, using your description of the the uh, institution you were talking about, effectively, that's what that plant is. If right. we're going to just peel back the onion sure. and be honest and transparent, and so you know, if they're if they're that that's why I asked the question. I'm not saying you know bring in bring in somebody right. who owns thirty plants uh, because you're you're right. There's a mm -hmm. little bit of you're you're part of a larger group and you're you're paying for for each other. Um, but I, I just don't know if the town would entertain. Uh, doing that. Yeah. So I got something to say. Oh, go, ahead. No, go ahead. Well, um, my concern is where do we separate that and how do we make, so one is a little bit of, is the, the, uh, debt and the load that we have right now, the financial system, component, right? The fan financial component. And then, um, where do we separate like the infrastructure in the ground versus just managing the operation of the plant um all of it like yeah you take all the pipes all the things and we never have to touch that again it's it, we would have to look at the money right it's, a, it's all financial so how do we when i was discussing it with uh the utilities that had come and offered us a couple different options there was protection for the handful of private users um, I had said that that was what was critical that, you know, it couldn't be sky high rates. And um, they assured me that there was a way to write it that way. But um, as Trevor said, the attractiveness to me was that they were going to have to pay us 20 plus million dollars for the um, plant and infrastructure. Obviously, that was just we were throwing do just dollars out. But the 20 million would go towards our debt yeah. down here. If you took it over as a consortium, I would assume that you're not probably giving us a twenty million dollar check. <laughs> no, so, we're, right. we're, we would be taking a twenty million dollar liability off your right. balance sheet. Right, yeah. but yeah, but you know the you, the thing that I, we we have to be able to be able to pay. I off. would I would entertain anything, any financial structure that made sure that the users on the South Deerfield plant are not going to pay a dime more except for normal operational cost increases going forward. In other words, if we if we don't keep the old Deerfield plant, then their their rates are going to balloon. And because they're going to they're going to lose a lot of people who are, who are help paying down this debt. So if if you could come up with a financial plan that could protect them, I'd be more than willing to entertain it with our accountant and, it, it, you know our account administrator so and, it's not a solid no right but but it's the nervousness for me is um just looking at other entities not that you were other entities right but in the past um other entities have gone and privatized they have spent not enough it's not a fair comparison because they don't have the financial backing that your consortium would have, but they, um, you know, they, they went in, they fixed this plant in Hardwick said, Oh, we're going to do it cheaper. And then uh, dumped it back on the users after, and they end up having to pay a, a boatload of money for it. That wouldn't happen here. Cause I know we'd write something out and, and you have the ability to, to kind of handle that stuff. I, it's a different entity, but I'm always concerned about long, so a hundred years out, what, what happens? Like if we have something written out, I definitely would entertain it. 
it's just a matter of just making sure like we, I just like to have control to make sure that we're doing the right thing for everybody. And, and that's one area in North and South. That's one area where I have absolute confidence in DA and the nonprofit. I, I believe that you would do your due diligence and yeah. you would come up with a plan that would be fair to everyone and um, that you would operate responsibly because your, your whole business structure depends, on, depends on you running the plant successfully. Uh, so I would have no no concern about you know the the, the intentions of the nonprofits. I, I and just don't have that doubt. And I just I know that we have a difference of opinion on this one about the permit. I, from my understanding, the town always holds that permit. But yes. you know I know that you you guys I think your lawyers looked at it and said no that's not really the case. You can do that. So we just sort that thing out once we know for sure that. Well, well you, I, I guess. You have a lot on your plate. You let us know when you want to entertain that conversation. We're happy to look at options. But at this point, it sounds yeah. like uh, you have you have information. Uh, if we can be a partner with you in any way to think about how to address these issues, you just let us know when you okay. want us to undertake that, and we will. I think at this point, we just sort of consider the work that we've done in partnership with you to be very done, valuable finalized yep. uh it gives you some answers um yep. but yeah. when you're ready to explore other things we're we're prepared to be your partner again okay love that yeah okay did, Good. did you have any other questions why we have um matt here Eric, i have i just have one question would that ever be something that the nonprofits would help out with figuring out how to get that sewage over to south deerfield we, we we have and that that number is much larger than anything that's in the way story. astronomical okay yeah i just wondered because i like mean that's 30, basically our, right? uh, it's designed to take it you know what i mean it would be a win when you would get that off of everybody's plate that would turn into a pump station it would be you guys would never have to do another upgrade or look at another one again yeah if you did that yeah. so I, I that's what the I just, cost of that was deemed to be 30. It was, right. a, it was like 38, depending on which, yeah. how many pump stations. Did you have a look at Well, we looked at it. It's the permitting. And then if you pick up yeah. what I would call the west side of Deerfield, it was astronomical. Well, it's very it, conceptual. And you got we're, going down five or 10 or going down Mill Village. It was, I, I remember 35. Yeah. Yeah. There were yeah. like numbers from 27. Like to 35, maybe. It was let, like, let me just say yeah. in today's construction costs, those numbers don't mean anything. Right. Yeah. Let me just also add that, that, that right. 35 is probably 50. Plus, um, right. plus the amount of time. I just want to put out that it, the amount of time, the uh, imminent domain to get the property and yeah. to run the pipe. And, and I'm sure you guys like working with Mass DOT. That, that would be sure. another piece of it. So I, I, I just, yes, we looked at it, I think is the answer to your question. But I think the the feeling was is that you 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 have a plant here, you have an infrastructure and a system that's working well. Um, yes, long term, maybe in 100 years, that might be the right answer. But I think the numbers just didn't make it make it seem viable. Okay. And I have a question, Matt. Um, you you mentioned that you'd be willing to continue to spend money with your engineers. Um, is there, this might be much cheaper, is there a way for you to consider a financial plan that, that solves the conundrum we have with paying for South Deerfield while also letting us give you, you know, control about the decision-making process for what you want to do with the plan? Um, if, if pretty much nobody who's a taxpayer is going to end up on this plant and not have higher costs because we relinquished control of it. I'm, you know, like, that's what I'm saying. I'm happy to consider that kind of financial solution as well, which would relinquish our responsibility for this. Mm. You know, other people may not feel that way. No, no, I, I, I want to, I realize that this plant could quit tomorrow. Yeah. And truthfully, it would not impact there are that many people compared to you all. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, obviously it's a huge disruption to your operation. And I can, and I, I know you're disappointed to say that we have to deal with, or I feel that we have to deal with our roads before we go back to the taxpayers. It's cheapest for us to um, move forward with USDA and uh, the whole loan process and grant process, um, you know, and get 20% or so, or 25%, maybe even more under the IRA money right now. Um, it would make a, much more sense to move forward. But I have to tell you, um, with roads still closed and in pretty rough shape, going to the taxpayers right now to vote for more money, 
uh, you know, to borrow is we just can't happen. So um, if you come want to wanna come up with a plan and and look further at the activated sludge option, um, you know, redesign because I I do feel that Weston and Sampson did bring some points forward about um, you know the clarify size of the clarifiers and X stuff like that. If you wanted to pursue that and keep moving forward on that, obviously we'd be thrilled. This is not to say that we're not aware that there are issues. Eric has been band-aiding it every single day, and we're so lucky to have him have the ability to keep it going. Well, it's not going to last long. I and I mean, you can't get parts for it. I mean, he's done everything. You can't, you I, can't even get him on the black market. So we need to get moving on something quick. I, I, I know. We're on borrowed time. But I, I'm just saying the reality is we have roads that are, we have to take care of. Uh, totally understand. Yeah. No, I, I think, uh, you know, we'll, we'll take that feedback and, mm -hmm. and, and see what the team has to say. And, okay. And, and I, I didn't want you to think that we weren't, um, agreeable. Any option is we're willing to look at. Okay. That's, that's what I, I, yeah. I, you know, if you said no, then we would, we would probably put our pencils down and, right. and, and say, great. Um, but you know we'll we'll see if there's a viable solution. Um, I think you highlighted the one that I've I've said is the biggest bugaboo, which is uh, you know the the much of the the money that is paid uh, as users of the old Deerfield plant really uh, is being used to to subsidize and pay the 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 upgrades to the South Deerfield plant. And I, I think that's open. That's that's mm -hmm. that's here. That's a reality. And I think what I'm hearing is is that if there's a a financial arrangement that that ensures that that continued subsidy will will be there so that uh the existing rate or rate table doesn't mm -hmm. have to be adjusted um that's good to know yeah great we have been looking at different options and i and i have brought to the table you know privatizing and stuff like that so sure. Sure. it's just who the other partner well, is? Yeah, no, <laughs> that's as, a big difference. As I said, I, you know, the nonprofits here, they're they're great partners, and, and I have no question that I, yeah. they, I, the you guys would do the right thing, and and I would also say that um, we just had to have a revote to pay to fix roads that were destroyed, right? Because people think we're squandering money, and when we come back to them with a hey, we've got a sixteen work, let's let's be optimistic and say. Um, an engineer designs an activated sludge plant that comes in at 14, you know, cost escal escalation, it costs 15. Um, that's still something that based on what I re recently saw, I'm not sure how the town's voters would go for, you know, so we're sort of stuck in a bind. We know yeah. that the plant needs to be repaired, but we don't have the ability to keep asking people to spend that large amounts of money on, on, as you pointed out, there's 35, maybe 35 taxpayers on the system. So I know that you you're subsidizing us in in some ways, and and that's why I say to me, uh, looking at it from a financial perspective, it give us a different take on things. You know, we've been talking about physical plants. You like a system, and you would you think it could be properly sized for dealing with the number of users down there. And I don't disagree with you, um, but if we could overcome that financial thing you know, which is a third alternative, you know, that's to me a good situation for everyone uh, going forward. Okay, great. Keep talking, <laughs> keep keep going together, partnership. Sure, you officially have me worried, Trevor, so, great. so thank you. Sorry, <laughs> I just, yeah, I'm more of a realist. <laughs> I, know, well, I know what it looks like I have there. more faith, I have an awful lot of faith in yeah. Eric, so. <laughs> well, yeah, great. We're going to blame no him pressure. now when it goes. No pressure. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> All right. Thank you, guys. All right. Thank, thank you thank very you. much. Good to see right. you guys. Good to see you. Casey, we signed the uh, um, Pittsfield Pipers. Is there anything else do you want us to talk about? Do you want to take a vote just to make sure that everybody understands that, you know, you signed it? Uh, we already voted it. Oh, that's right. Yeah. No, we already voted it. You voted the contract. Yeah. yeah. When we yeah. were talking about the notice. Yeah, I okay. just wanted John no, to be aware. We need. Okay. All right. Well, then I'll take a, a motion to adjourn. Oh, uh, let's see. Do there anything else we wanted to talk about? Um, 
It's no. really all that's on the agenda. Yeah, but I like breaking the rules. Of course you do. <laughs> you can get do you have anything, yeah. Eric? You good? Yeah. All right. Thank you, Eric. I really appreciate you. Yeah, thanks for coming time. in on a Friday. I appreciate that very yeah. much. I'm sorry. We messed I, that up. I know we are stressing you out, but all right. All right. Second. Nick and adjourn. Oh, did you? Yeah, I seconded yours. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think, right? All right. All those in favor? Tim Hilchie, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn S. I. Okay.